Welcome to the summit of Mount Sinai. I am David Miron Wapner, Chair of the Interfaith Center for Sustainable Development. We have ascended the mountain on behalf of our partners in the Sinai Climate Partnership, the Peace Department led by James Sternlich, the Elijah Interfaith Institute under the direction of Rabbi Elon Goshen Gottstein, Faith for Earth, the Faith for Earth Initiative and the United Nations Environment Program, Gigawatt Global and its CEO, Yosef Abramowitz, Chazon, represented by Nigel Savage, founding executive director, and the current executive director, Yakir Manella, and the Israel Union of Environmental Defense and the Rodberg Foundation from Canada. And the Christian Climate Observers Program, who we have met up here on Mount Sinai. We are here at Mount Sinai, a place of historic revelation, a holy spot to the three Abrahamic faiths. At the same time, the world's political and civil society leaders gather south of here at Sharm el Sheikh for the UNFCC COP27. We're here to kick off a global spiritual call to action on climate justice, with being held at 10 different mountaintops around the world culminating in a first-of-its-kind ceremony of repentance for climate justice in London later on today. First, I'll invite my friends here to read from the Holy Land Declaration. So it was first announced at Windsor Castle and then at the Copenhagen Climate Conference in 2009. Yakir? We are Jewish and Christian religious leaders who have come together in the name of our faiths in the Holy Land. We recognize that we stand today at a fateful juncture in human history. The world scientists have presented overwhelming evidence for the reality of man-made climate change that will, if unchecked, kill tens of millions of people, eradicate thousands of species, and endanger the lives of all our children and grandchildren. With faith in God's mercy and in our divinely mandated ability to make a difference, we declare that global climate change is an emergency which demands a massive and immediate response from each of us. Now is the time to make our voices heard so that our leaders may have the wisdom and political will to ensure our common future. Um, we note that the likely consequences of unmitigated climate change include um, one, intergenerational injustice that is an offense against our common teachings to nurture the well-being of our descendants. For the sake of our wasteful and extravagant consumption today, we are creating a world ravaged by floods, famines, and shortages of food and drinking water awaiting our children tomorrow. When you come to the land, you shall plant trees, Leviticus 19.23. Just as you found trees waiting for you, so act that your children may find trees in the world that awaits them. The Midrash. Midrash. Uh, do not spread corruption in the earth after it has been so well ordered. Quran, the Heights, 7.56. We call, on, <coughs> we call on each and every adherent of our faiths to reduce his or her carbon footprint. Our common teachings insist on individual responsibility and do not allow us to delegate doing that which is right and good to governments. See, I have placed before you life and goodness and also death and evil. Deuteronomy 30, 15. <laughs> Climate change is both a global crisis and an immense opportunity. It challenges us all to live better and walk more wisely and responsibly on the earth. Our call is to mobilize the wisdom of our respective teachings and the collective passion and ingenuity of our prophets, saints and sages to inspire a vision for the future that matches the magnitude of the challenge. We urge all men and women of faith to join together to pray that the one God will give us the wisdom and courage to choose life for our children's sake. Amen. Amen. Amen.
and I will now read a shortened version together with my friends of the 10 spiritual principles for climate justice that were developed over the past few days in London by 50 uh, global religious leaders. Uh, they will be posted on the website of the Interfaith Center for Sustainable Development, www.interfaithsustain.com, and we will invite comment from anyone who wishes to so that we may develop a version that can be presented next year at the COP28 in Dubai. And I, we read these principles with the greatest of humility. Creation is not our possession. We are grateful for God's gifts and the gift of life itself. Taking our rightful place as a partner and co-creator, we recognize our human responsibility to love and protect the natural world. Nature is permeated by God's presence and being, by the spiritual, manifesting ultimate reality in every particle. We must treat all life with reverence and awe. Three. We are all part of a greater interdependent whole. Each element receives and gives influence, impact, love, and growth. We must care for each other and all life on the planet. Four. Humanity's task is to nurture and serve life, to resist the temptation to greed, arrogance, exploitation, waste, and harm. We recognize human responsibility for the well-being of all life today and for future generations. Five. The human person and soul have, ca have capacities to realize our responsibilities to creation and our planet. A disciplined spiritual life can lead us in overcoming the challenges of climate change. Six. There is an inherent integral relationship between the human person within and objective reality and the natural world without. Seven, processes of growth, transformation, return, and repentance are fundamental to human existence. Engage in an ongoing effort to purify, raise, and transform oneself to a higher vision of a sustainable world of climate justice. Eight, there are reactions when we harm the earth and others. Therefore, act mindfully, knowing that every action counts. Nine. Empowered by mind, reason, and spiritual understanding, we adopt a mindful and attentive view of the natural world. So take seriously the lessons and observations of science and common reason. 10. A life of attentive, intelligent love is embodied in compassion, in openness to the pain and vulnerability of the world. We feel the pain of the earth, of the poor, and of all life who suffer the consequences of climate change. We open our hearts, being sensitive to the intolerable insecurities and injustices of climate change. And it's very old school because it's written in handwriting. In that one. <laughs> Thank you very much, my friends. Thank you, everyone. <clears throat> Let us work together to repair the world. Hey, uh, you guys wanted to say something, right? You guys want to do a thing now? Hiking up the, the mountain in the dark, feeling how vulnerable we are in this raw, overwhelmingly powerful desert. <laughs> We feel small, and we repent for our sins against each other and against the planet, for the sin of selfishness, for the sin of greed, for the sin of apathy. 
may we repent as people of faith, as people of all kinds all over the world. May we make repentance and step into a new life together. I have a couple things to smash. I don't, do you want to have a Sure. before you. Yeah. <laughs> I think I want to say a word about the role of, the, of Jewishness and the Jewish people in the 21st century in relationship to all of this. I think that in relationship to the climate crisis, it's possible to feel too much despair and to actually be brought down by it. And I think it's really necessary that we face bad things that are happening in the world, honestly and squarely, but that we not get pulled down by them. And I think a piece of the Jewish story across 20 centuries has been about facing tragedy and destruction, not shying away from it, but in every generation, genuinely trying to create a stronger Jewish community and a better world for everybody, and doing that with a sense of hope. And I actually think that the climate movement right now needs that sense of hope, needs a sense of hope and determination. And so I want to bless me and you and all of us that we should face the challenges that the world faces, but that we should do so with a sense of hope and possibility and coming together across difference. So um, these tablets are already a little bit broken. They were, they were made by the Strike for Friday's um, teenagers. And in Hebrew it says, Keep your promises, which are not being kept by the world leaders. I have the. Uh, unfortunately, these promises, the climate promises, have not been kept worldwide, including in Israel. When it comes to the leaders of the world who are gathering at COP27, there's a lot of talk. There's some action, but there's not enough to be able to keep the world to one and a half degrees on the warming. The whole world needs to cut our emissions by half by 2030. And they're not yet. We take these green commandments. We look down to Sharm el Sheikh, and we're not satisfied. Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah.